We're live. We're live. Eric Hash, how are you doing today? Oh, Tom Daves, you beautiful son of a gun. You were a chiseled <laughs> piece of meat out there in California. <laughs> hey, great to see you. And you for those of you that don't know Eric Hash, he's an entrepreneur. He's a public speaker. He's a coach. He has a huge real estate team um, and just always adding value, having fun. And he's kind of a funny guy too, right? That's what my mirror tells me every day. <laughs> That's right. Well, great. I'd like to just jump right into it. First of all, uh, Happy New Year. Happy Thanks, New Decade, right? So I know this time of year, um, everyone has perspective. They look back the last year or probably even mm -hmm. the last decade. Um, so I'd like to just start in with looking back over the last decade. Yeah. Um, what were some of the things that you have learned and some of the things that you're going to be able to um, take action moving forward based on uh, your journey the last 10 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I love the retrospective mindset. And uh, I just had my knee replaced because that's what most 39 year olds do is they get their knee replaced over Christmas break so their wife can wait on them hand and foot. And in that time that I was lying around, I just really, really got uh, introspective and looked back to see where I've come from, the things that I've learned. So it's really aligned with this, Tom. So I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share this. Uh, 10 years ago, I, I was a part-time realtor. Uh, I, I was a full-time youth minister, um, was in the middle of a financial crisis in my life, was in the middle of a marriage crisis. My wife and I were battling infertility. Um, I had $70,000 in credit card debt. I had $20,000 taken out on the second mortgage. Uh, I was working 100 hours a week, um, just trying to stay alive, really. And uh, fast forward to now, and I literally have grown my net worth by 4,000%. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a guy that's driven by money by any means, but I am driven by impact. And uh, those numbers, as I studied it to see what has changed in my life in 10 years, I underestimated what I could do in a year, uh, or excuse me, I overestimated what I could do in a year, but I really underestimated what I could do in a decade because I had a chance to do some really big things. And now I'm proud to uh, own 25 different businesses, pretty much all real estate related. I got a couple of weirder things in there too, but um, the lessons I've learned, Tom, are this, is that uh, if I can grow as a leader, everything is easier. And, and it just stops right there. If I can, if I can figure out how to be a better leader for my people, my law of attraction is higher. I bring in better people into the world. Uh, I now am working with A players instead of B players. And so when you have a world of all stars and it's reflective on what I think I've done, and that's, that's just my own personal development journey, trying to improve my mindset, uh, my disciplines, my habits, and making sure that I'm committed to people every day. That's awesome. Now that, that's great. And so if we could unpack that a little bit more, growing as a leader, you said a few key words, you said your mindset, your disciplines. Mm -hmm. So um, looking back over the last few years, um, what are some of the specific activities that you've done to, to really grow as a leader and then to pass that on to other leaders? Yeah. Yeah. Uh Tom, if you were a new agent on my team, uh, I would have a very clear regimented structure of the things you need to do for your onboarding until I feel confident that you can go and sell houses, right? Same in your world, right, Tom? Right. Okay. Yep. What do we do with leaders? Because I, I think that leaders are, are worth 50 to 100 times more than a producer is, and yet we don't have a, a regimen or, or, or a schedule. So what I've done is I've, I've subscribed to a, a three-step process. It's really easy. It's watch me, watch you, go and do. And so both for my own personal development as well as uh, for the development of the people on my team and especially the leaders, we followed that same regimen. So the first is watch me. Uh, I can watch Tiger Woods golf all day long, but it doesn't make me a better golfer. So I can read anything I want, but uh, education, or excuse me, entertainment, uh, uh, here I get it all wrong, uh, reading a book for entertainment without the actual application of it uh, is merely entertainment. So uh, education without 
implementation is merely entertainment. There, I got it. Hey, you got it. Go. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, I've been drinking a lot of water. So uh, we make sure that it's not just watching Tiger Woods golf. So I've, I've found leaders that I've watched them and, and I've studied them. I've learned from them. I've read a plethora of books and I've put myself in a regimented scheduled development time as a leader. So watch me as first. So I've, I find people that are above uh, the game that I'm playing right now and I watch them. The second is to have somebody watch you. That's coaching. That's having truth tellers in your life that will call you on your bunk. Uh, I think quite often those of us at the top don't let anybody coach us in our team and that's a mistake. Uh, we should be getting feedback consistently on how we can get better. And so the watch you portion is other people watching us and allowing ourselves to be coached. This is the piece most people breeze over or spend the smallest amount of time on, and it's actually where the largest amount of time should be spent. The third and final piece is the go and do portion. It's when you are equipped and ready and able, and so you are, are charged to go and to do. And so at this point now, um, Tom, I just I, I wrote a leadership book. It came out this September. It's called Play for the Person Next to You. And I don't declare myself as uh, as the perfect leader, but I am a very, very passionate student. And I'm in the go and do portion at this point. While I'm still watching other people, I'm getting coached and uh, adjusted and developed every single moment. That's awesome. Well, speaking of your book, play. Hey, my man. Woo! Right there. There it <laughs> is. Look at that. Um, so how much, look at that makeup and the, man, was that, that like a high school photo they got there? Uh, I said, uh, make me look like chubby Carson Wentz. And there they got it. <laughs> no, I'm reading this book right now, and I'm really oh, thanks, enjoying buddy. it. It's that. really good, and it's a great read. I would recommend anyone who's interested in uh, leadership or serving others to definitely read it. Um, a couple of uh, quotes that I really enjoyed that I'd like to ask you about. Um, in one of the first chapters, the quote is, I don't call the people I work with employees. They're my team members and they're my family. And so maybe you could speak to that just a little bit. You know, uh, in, people call me boss man or boss all the time. And I, it feels kind of gross because I don't want to be their boss. I, I'm cool being their leader and I'm cool being their team member. Uh, but frankly, if you have employees, it, I just picture this, this image of somebody telling others what to do when they're not in the trenches themselves. But I'm, I'm in the game with them every day. Uh, it, it, the way I find my business now, I'm only in the real estate game, traditional real estate about two days a week. Uh, but I'm in there with all my thoughts and my energy and it's certainly all my resources uh, all the time. And, and, and so I don't look at it as people who uh, work for me and instead I work for them. Uh, I, I, I show up every day, uh, not with them as my employees, but we're, we're a team. And frankly, I've always battled with, you know, do you call it a team? Do you call it a family? Um, I can go both ways, uh, but frankly, I've realized this, and this is a huge aha for me, is I thought that as uh, the rainmaker, I, I was the guy that everybody wanted to hang out with and like the, the guy that would get invited to everything. And, and frankly, as we've grown now, I've gone from being the captain of the team to the coach of the team. That means that I no longer am invited to all the, the get togethers and the hangout times that people don't necessarily, they, they love me, they appreciate me, but it doesn't mean that they wanna hang out with me all the time. And I've had to transition from wanting to be the popular guy on the team to now being the guy with the most influence because influence matters a lot more than popularity. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a lot of times the same thing happens to me. So I, I wonder, did I take, did I take a shower? What is it? You know, yeah. nobody wants to hang out with me as much. <laughs> uh, so that's great. And another thing that you said is you kind of debunk um, a lot of the old fables and a lot of the things that are sayings, you know, for example, um, quick to hire, slow to hire, quick to fire. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that your philosophy is slow to hire and slow to fire. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Thank you. Uh, I've I've heard uh, slow to hire, quick to fire. I've heard some people say quick to hire, quick to fire. But right. if I'm bringing somebody into my world, uh, first off, I, I, I need to vet that person. And not just vet them, but 
regimentally go through what I think is over the top audacious because frankly, I spend more time with that person in that office right there than I do with my own wife sometimes. And if a 30 minute uh, interview and a quick uh, BS conversation and a, a, a resume is what has me sold to invite that person into my world. That's like getting married after the first Tinder date. It's, it's irresponsible, I think. And so to vet those people with a great level of care and concern is the first part. So that's the slow to hire part. From that point on, I think we have a commitment to that person. Understand that that person, let's say, Tom, you, uh, you and I came to work together and you came into our world and after one week, you were underperforming. Now, the slow to hire, quick to fire method would say, this guy sucks, get him out of here. But I think it's my job as a leader to lean in, to change the proximity from being far away here and trying to see everything and the sum of the, the, sum of the parts to lean in to see the whites of your eyes, to understand, is it an issue with our training? Is something going on in your personal life? Uh, I say in the book that you can't not have cancer at work. And I think that we oftentimes make the mistake of not wanting people in our working worlds uh, to fully embrace uh, what's happening in their personal lives. Uh, I think it's impossible. And so if you came to work with, uh, with me and after a week you were struggling, instead of firing you and treating you like a commodity that's easily replaced, by the way, I just spent hours and hours and hours working to get you in and then training to build you up. It's irresponsible to just can you. That's not how I treat people, Tom. And, and, and frankly, if, if I am playing the infinite game, Simon Sinek just wrote a book called The Infinite Game, talks about the difference between the finite game, the short term, and the infinite game, which is the long term. That finite game over here tells me, fire Tom. He's underperforming. He's not going to hack it. If he can't hack it now, he's never going to hack it. Get him out of here. The infinite game says everybody's watching and how you treat people matters. And what you do for one another matters. And so I'm going to run towards the fire instead of away from it to see what's going on. And then we will continue to say, Tom, this is who you need to be in order to work here. And this is who you need to be and this is how you need to perform. And, and frankly, it, it's, it's not just to say, here's the bar, Tom. And you, since you didn't jump over it yesterday, you have to jump over it today. I'm going to say, I'm going to jump with you until you can get over that bar. And then you're going to jump on your own because leaders don't let people die alone. Oh, that's great. So let's say that they continued down the path of um, weariness or wearing you down, or yep. Yep. they just don't match energy with energy and they're not showing up. Um, then how many chances do you give this person? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there is there is the eternal conflict. So I'm a man of faith, and my faith tells me that you uh, you give forgiveness not just seven times or seventy times; it's seventy times seven times. So that's that's sometimes that conflict with how we want to run our businesses. Yeah. Uh, and so, in our world and in the book uh, as well, I've talked about it. Uh, and I, the the idea of coaching somebody up or coaching somebody out is actually the same thing. So Tom, if you and I were working together and you were struggling, we would make sure that you clearly understand who you need to be. And what I'm going to monitor now is I'm going to monitor the crescendo. Are you going towards who you need to be or are you decrescendoing and you're shrinking down and not showing up with the same kind of energy? And that's what we monitor. And, and frankly, it, it depends on how long you've been with me. If, if you've been with me about a couple of weeks, it's a pretty quick measure. Sure. If you've been with me a couple of years, you've earned some grace. And so we, we afford that. And so there's not a, a one size fits all mentality for this, Tom, at least I don't believe there is, uh, but we monitor the crescendo and the idea of coaching up and coaching out shows up as the same thing because you're clearly identifying who they need to be in order to work there. We're just choosing to work with them on that instead of leaving them to flounder on their own. Well, that's great. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and a couple of other quotes that I really enjoyed is, I mean, I just love that you're serving and that you're giving back, uh, sell a home, save a child. And so your quote in here is, we're the extension cord when we are connected to the right people and the right motivations. Amazing things can happen through us. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit more about us as an extension cord. 
uh, I got to talk about this just yesterday with somebody as well. And, and uh, he was trying to, uh, I, I was getting coached and he was analyzing like everything in my life and why I do what I do. And I told him that I get the, the biggest joy from being an extension cord because I think we're naive to think that we have all the power that we're that driving force where we have the Midas touch and everything that we touch, is, uh, touch turns to gold. Frankly, I just want to be connected. And that's a faith thing for me. If I'm connected uh, to what I believe is the right source or whatever may be your driver in this, if you're connected to the right people and the right power sources, you get take any of that lightly. Uh, being an extension cord is a responsibility. It's a privilege. Uh, and oftentimes it means that uh, we're frankly unappreciated. Uh, I, I was talking with a group a couple of weeks ago. Uh, um, Bobcat, uh, the tractor manufacturer, is, is headquartered here in Fargo where I live. And so I was speaking to a group of their emerging leaders and I said, you have to understand that you're signing up to be a leader right now. And it is the most thankless, unappreciated, energy sucking, uh, life ruining best job you can ever have is you get to watch all these things happen through you because you've been a part of it. And if you do it right, nobody gives you any credit. I like that. That's yeah. awesome. And um, the pyramid that you have here is really awesome. Oh, and yeah. I like the fact that you have at the bottom is, you know, who we're serving God, self, family, then team members, then clients, and then at the very top is the community. community. Yes, sir. So why can you speak to that a little bit and how some yeah. agents and business people have that pyramid reversed? Um, Tom, we as men don't oftentimes talk about self-care, and we should. Uh, you finished uh, a couple of weeks before I did, but you finished a 75 hard challenge in which you physically and mentally challenged every bit of you for 75 straight Ooh. days. Yeah. What yeah. you did is you took care of the base of that pyramid. And wouldn't you know, when you took care of the base of that pyramid, you probably had more strength for your family. You probably had more focus on your team members, on your clients and on your community. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that we have to take care of is we have to take care of our self-care, our relationship with our creator and our family. Those things matter so much more than the business that we do any day of the week. And if we can get our energy from those sources and put them as the first priority, then it's our team members that come next. I have a friend uh, who is a realtor in Fargo with me. And you have he, a friend? Uh, I was surprised too. Uh, and, and he asked me out to lunch and in that lunch, he wanted to, uh, discuss his upcoming year. And he said, next year is the year that I'm finally putting my clients first. And I heard it knowing that he has a team within his care. And I thought, Ugh. if you put your clients first, that means that your team comes second and they get your leftovers. And, and if we have anybody within our care, it is our responsibility to give them everything. And if we can give them everything, we thus are now giving even more to our clients because it's not just us, but it's our team also, which creates so much more fruit for our community. And the pyramid becomes in alignment and in its place when we can first take care of God, self, and family, then your team members, then your clients, and then your community. That's awesome. I like that. So I know that we're talking to a lot of big teams and mega agents and uh, independent brokerages today, but we're also, we have some brand new agents just getting into the business awesome. that are watching this. So if you were a brand new agent just getting started, um, what recommendations do you have? So the, I'm going to answer this in two parts. Uh, the first is if you're in a community that you've always been in, uh, if you have a lot of deep seated relationships, that's the first way I'll answer. Or if you picked me up and put me in Sacramento, California, uh, and I didn't know a soul, what would I do? So I'll start with the latter. If I didn't know a soul, I would align with a team so that I had an immediate fuel source to get going. Uh, this is a difficult industry and why make it harder on yourself and instead align yourself with people who know what they're doing, who are seasoned, 
who can get you more at bats and can train you the right way. Because the success of an average team member is usually two to three times that of an individual agent who tries to do it on their own. Uh, so that's what I would do if I were in a, a new community. But if I were in the community that I've always been a part of, or I had some deep seated relationships, uh, boy, I would start hustling and I would get in front of every single one of the people that I know and let them know what I do, but I would never, ever, ever ask for business. And that's so important. Uh, I remember when I opened up my real estate brokerage in 2014, my phone rang off the hook with people who said, Eric, congratulations, man. I saw you just opened up a brokerage. That's huge. I want to, I'd love to take you out to coffee. I want to get caught up. And so I went to coffee and I, I went to lunches and I went to happy hours with people. And in every single one of those times, it was congratulations. How's your family? Uh, this business is really great. By the way, have you ever thought about uh, buying some life insurance? And sure. by the way, have you ever thought about this wealth management piece? And like, they took what was building a relationship and they immediately transactionalized it. And so they devalidated the affirmation that I received and they devalidated the relationship building that happened because they only wanted to go to coffee for coffee's sake. If you're in a community where you already have deep seated relationships, do not start multi-level marketing this person and selling them and instead earn the right to be heard. And the way you do that is by being so unbelievable that they can't not refer you. What I mean by this, Tom, is they have to know you're a realtor. So you tell them the change that's happening in their life, but not by telling them, guess what, Tom, now I'm selling real estate. That's, that's not how you do it. Tom, if I ask you about your, your family and your business for 20 minutes, what are you probably going to ask me about after that? Your family, your business. Yeah. Life. Uh, so I'm going to come from contribution and I'm going to give and give relentlessly, hoping that the things I throw out there, the boomerang I throw out there will come on back to me. And when it comes on back to me, you're going to ask me about my business. And then I can say, listen, I just started selling real estate. It's super hard. I'm going to hustle it with everything I do. But I set a big goal for my wife and I uh, to sell at least 30 homes this year. It's big. It's a stretch. But I'm going to just hustle my, my tail off. And so, uh, and that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about it. I'm, I may tell you about where I'm working and why I chose to work there and all that. But I'm not going to ask for business. I'm instead going to follow up with you in the next couple of weeks after we meet and I'm going to see how you're doing and I'm going to bring value and I'm going to ask the same questions and I'm going to follow up with what we talked about previously. And then I'm going to introduce you to some great new people I met and hope that you're doing the same for me, but I'm never taking, I'm always giving. And when you can always be a giver, the amount of things that come back to you, it's how, it's how I built my whole career, Tom is uh, my first year in real estate in 2011. Uh, I didn't spend a dime on marketing. Uh, I was a full-time realtor, but I had spent my whole previous career building relationships. And wouldn't you know, my first year in real estate, I sold 52 houses. And I did that because I relied on relationships and I didn't try to transactionalize people. I told stories on social media. I didn't, I didn't sell. I told stories and shined a light on other people. And wouldn't you know, when you shine a light on other people, that reflects back to you. That's great. I appreciate you sharing that, Eric. Yeah. So I know we started off kind of taking a look back at the last decade. So I'd like to take a look forward and maybe you could share your crystal ball, what you think is going to happen in the real estate <laughs> world in the next 10 years. And then also what's your vision in the next 10 years? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my real estate crystal ball tells me that in the next 10 years, the amount of realtors that will exist will be uh, probably 50% of what it is today. Uh, I, I think that technology is going to demand that uh, we sell more and we make less per transaction. Uh, I don't believe that uh, half the people that are doing it right now are going to cut it. Relationships still win, but people are going to be reliant on technology. It, do it doesn't mean that realtors will cease to exist, but it does mean that a realtor has to be leveraged exceptionally well with the technologies that are there for us because the consumer is demanding it. And frankly, we need to adjust where the consumer goes. Um, this iBuyer movement is an interesting one, Tom. 
uh, and, and to see what's happening because here in little Fargo, North Dakota, I started an iBuyer movement uh, 18 months ago and I bought 36 properties so far. Wow. And frankly, I'm making more money doing that than I am running my real estate team. Uh, when all the houses sell, I got a lot out there that haven't sold yet. And so I, I, I don't have the money for it yet, but, um, I think that, uh, realtors are going to get a little more savvy. We're going to see things bundled together more. And so it's going to become one-stop shops. If I'm going to go to the Tom Dave's team for real estate, I'm also going to want to go there for mortgage and insurance and title. And I'm going to want to get everything under one umbrella because frankly, Zillow is going to offer that. And, uh, Zillow is, Zillow is not the enemy. Zillow is the capitalist who is the fastest one to get to what the consumers want. And the consumers want ease and they don't want the hassle of what it takes today. And so the Tom Dave's team and the Tom Dave's company is going to look very different in five and 10 years than what it looks like right now, because all these other ancillary supportive businesses will need to be a part of it. So that's my prediction for where we're going. I, I could be totally wrong, uh, but it's pretty, uh, pretty researched with that answer. Well, that's great. And then your vision for Eric Hatch, Eric, Hatch, your 25 companies and your <laughs> brokerage, you closed 636 transactions. This we did. Helped 636 families, I might say. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank How you. about you? Uh, prestige worldwide is what I'm going for, Tom. Uh, yeah, we're... <laughs> Uh, I never thought I'd have 25 companies. Now that's always a little bit of a skew, right? Cause half of those are investment groups and, and that sort, but I have LLCs for them. So I guess I'll call them companies. Um, I believe that what I just shared with you of where we're going, that's where we're pivoting right now and, and trying to create a one-stop shop uh, environment. Frankly, we, we are handing out mortgages to people and we're handing out insurance business to people when we're the ones uh, earning the reputation, earning the business, uh, doing the marketing for it. And people want to trust um, who we are, not just who we're connected to. And so we're, we're going to continue to open up those ancillary businesses. We're going to keep flipping houses. We're going to keep finding those opportunities. Um, there's big chances of growth with wholesale, with property management. Uh, those are a couple things down the pipe, but that's just in the next 12 to 24 months. So 10 years from now, I assume I will own some sort of uh, robot uh, flying car company. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> frankly, frankly, I, I think that things are changing at such a dramatic pace right now uh, in the world that none of us know in the next 10 years of who, what that company, I think the company that's going to have the biggest growth, Netflix had the biggest growth in the last uh, 10 years with a 4,000% appreciation in their stock. I think that next company doesn't exist yet or doesn't, you know, it, it's, it's not publicly traded because I don't, <coughs> I think technology is moving so fast that we don't know yet. So frankly, I want to, uh, I want to find every ancillary business from having my own construction company to cleaning company to landscaping company to lawn care company and everything in between so that the brand hatch becomes synonymous with being taken care of. And we're just going to offer you all the mediums on how to get there. Well, I think you nailed it. I mean, it, things are just moving so fast. Um, it's just going to be like an e-ticket ride at Disneyland or Disney World. It's going to be pretty exciting, fun ride. And real estate, like I always say, you can go from the height of exaltation to the depths of defeat within the same 60 seconds. So yes, you it's can. going to be a lot of fun. Well, hey, Eric, thanks so much for joining us today. How can anyone get a hold of you? How can we get a hold of you, Eric? You know what? Go to hatchingleaders.com. Uh, easiest place if you want to pick up the book, if you want to see some of the things we're doing. It's going to connect you to everything. Oh, what a handsome guy on that. Look at that. That's awesome. Hubba hubba. <laughs> Eric, Happy New Year. Thank you so much. Thanks, and Tom. My I'm pleasure. Sure we'll see you soon. Thanks again. Have Thanks a great so day. Better. God bless. You too.